Today I'm cycling the Fluval Evo 13.5 so I can add my first fish and I'll show you all of the fish I considered before plumping for the best pound for pound nano fish in the hobby. First up then let's take a look at what fish are suitable for a tank of this size and why I didn't choose them. Starting with the Pictus Blenny. Small, great character, but a potential coral muncher, so he's out. And next is the Wet Morelloras. Inquisitive, won't eat corals, but never looks as pretty in the flesh as they do in the pictures. How about a Pink Street Ras then? Well, they're exactly the same story as the Wet Morella, so it's a no for now. Moving on to the Shrimp Gobi with Pistol Shrimp. Cool behavior, peaceful, reef safe, a definite one for the shortlist, but not quite active enough for my top pick. But before I show you what I've gone for, let's take a look at some honorable mentions. There's the pretty but timid firefish, the ubiquitous and arguably essential clownfish pair, the blue neon goby that's a bit too static for my liking, and the tiny but shiny yellow clown goby. But none of those are quite as awesome as the winner, the royal grammar. Peaceful, reef safe, insanely bright colors, easy to keep, doesn't get too big. Ladies and gentlemen, say hello to the perfect nano tank fish. So with my first fish chosen then, I need to take a few steps to prepare the tank before I go and get him. Job one is to test how salty the tank water is. Shops don't always test salinity before they sell you premix salt water, so you'll need to make sure it's around 1.025 by using this simple refractometer. Anything from 1.024 to 1.026 is fine, but if it's outside of that range, you'll need to adjust your salinity before you collect your first fish. You'll also need to do a quick temperature check to make sure your water is somewhere around 25 degrees Celsius or 77 Fahrenheit, although a couple of degrees Celsius either side is fine for now. And finally, you'll want to test for ammonia to make sure there is none. I prefer to use these Seachem ammonia alert discs because they give you a constant reading which will tell you if there's a problem straight away and because they're easier than manual testing. But if you do choose to test manually, make sure you test every day for the first two weeks. Ammonia is seriously nasty stuff for fish. Next is cycling the tank. The purpose of doing so is to establish a colony of bacteria that will eat toxic ammonia and turn it into less harmful nitrite and nitrate. And you can simply buy bacteria in a bottle, which is what I've done. Now I'm using ATM Colony, although there are plenty of other options that do exactly the same thing. All you need to do is give the bottle a bit of a shake and add the contents to your tank on the same day you add your first fish. Now if unlike this tank you have any filtration like a UV steriliser or a skimmer, you should turn it off for the first couple of weeks while the bacteria population settles. Just make sure you leave your water pumps on to keep the tank oxygenated. Then you can go and collect your fish from your local fish shop. To acclimate fish, all I've ever done is float the bag in the tank water for around half an hour to match the temperatures. Then he can go straight in and in my experience it's rarely necessary to drip acclimate. I'm leaving the lights off for now so my new finned friend can settle in gently. And new fish often don't come out of the rocks for a few days anyway. That's totally natural behaviour and if you go moving rocks around to find him, it'll only stress him out, so just give him time to settle and he'll come out when he feels comfortable. Now for the first week I'll be feeding a tiny amount of food while my bacteria population settles. And by tiny I mean literally just a few mice and shrimp per day or half a dozen pellets if you prefer dry food. Overfeeding a saltwater tank is a crime, punishable by algae outbreaks. Now it'll be a few weeks before I add my second fish, but when I do so, the primary criteria will be to find something peaceful. In a small tank like this, there is no room to escape aggression, so a fish like a damsel, a six line wrasse, or a dotty back is the last thing you want. It'd be like having an angry Mike Tyson as your roommate. No offense, Mike, please don't hurt me. Now over the next few weeks I'll add my first cleanup crew, my first coral and I'll be upgrading a lot of the standard equipment to push this tank onto the next level. And of course this video is not sponsored so I bought everything myself including all the upgrades I'll show you next week. So make sure you like and subscribe for the next episode and until then happy reefing.